the SNP government is falling apart and Nicola Sturgeon goes after Donald Trump. Hello everyone and welcome to today's second video. Uh, as you saw in the last video we were talking about the European Union falling apart. This one is going to be about the SNP government and Nicola Sturgeon's leadership. Things are not going well today uh, because the Nicola Sturgeon decided to uh, make a huge move against one of her top senior MPs. Um, we all know Joanna Cherry. Joanna Cherry is one of the SNP minions who uh, was uh, one of the architects of the second referendum uh, against Brexit. She uh, led the movement uh, with the Brexit court cases to stop Brexit and she failed all of them because Brexit was inevitable. And uh, she, there's a massive row right now in the inside the SNP uh, as a party with the whole Alex Salmon inquiry. You've got a part of the SNP who are pro Alex Salmon. You've got the other side, Nicola Sturgeon making a move against Alex Salmon. And this is this could bring down Nicola Sturgeon as leader. Uh, but um, earlier today, Joanna Cherry actually tweeted saying that despite hard work, results and a strong reputation of being sacked today from the SNP front bench, my constituents and fellow party members who gave me a resounding mandate in recent NEC elections should rest assured that I will continue to work hard for them. So this is how we found out that one of the SNP's top politicians was sacked. She had to tweet it. They didn't even actually send out a statement before she tweeted this. Uh, so this happened. No one knew exactly why. Uh, no one actually uh, knew the reason. She didn't explain it. Uh, uh, the, Nicola Sturgeon didn't come out to explain it. But we found out why this has actually happened. This division inside the, um, the SNP has been growing for the last uh, couple of months. Tom Gordon uh, from the Herald Scotland actually said that, fancy that, the only SNP MPs without a role in the new Westminster lineup are the three closest to Alex Salmon. Yes, so you got Joanna Cherry, Angus McNeil and Kenny uh, McCaskill. So it actually started from here because back in uh, November, a couple of months ago, Joanna Cherry actually said that uh, Alex Salmon uh, should take his place back inside the party because he has said that he's not guilty. This inquiry about Alex Salmon harassing people, and this has been going on for a while now, in case you don't know, uh, but uh, just because Alex Salmon said, oh, I'm not guilty, I'm, I'm a good boy. Joanna Cherry said, well, he said he's a good boy. Give him back the, his, his party whip, everything's fine. Obviously, the party leadership, uh, um, Nicola Sturgeon, uh, didn't like that comment, so it started from there. It's been escalating. Now the whole party is falling apart because um, in the next uh, couple of weeks, we're going to have Alex Salmon's uh, latest testimony and also Nicola Sturgeon in, t in terms of the court case. And uh, if it's proven that Nicola Sturgeon has lied to the Scottish Parliament about uh, her knowing or not knowing about Alex Salmon's in, um, the, uh, accusation, she might be, uh, be forced to actually resign from her role as First Minister and leader of the SNP. So this is uh, going on at the moment in Scotland. And uh, we had uh, um, the Westminster team, in, um, the SNP in Westminster, uh, who tried to basically uh, do a bit of a shake up, a reshuffle for the front bench. And uh, it actually it's interesting because they've decided to promote a number of new MPs. So you got uh, Patricia uh, Gibson, Angela uh, Crawley, Richard Thompson, Stephen Flynn, all these guys uh, who are pretty much pro Nicola Sturgeon and they're not close to Alex Salmon at this point. Uh, so th this move is definitely that the wipeout is happening right now. And uh, it doesn't really look good because the party unity is gone. The electorate in Scotland know exactly um, what they're dealing with at this point. We've been waiting for this moment for a few years for the SNP as a party and as government to be exposed properly because until now, Nicola Sturgeon as a leader, she's very good at media and PR and how she comes across. Comes across. So a lot of people just didn't know much about uh, the, uh, the crises and the scandals inside the Scottish government. One thing that's come out now, which is absolutely astonishing, is that Daily Record published this um, recently, a, a couple of months ago, saying that uh, according to the Scottish government, one million Scots will receive the jab by January. One million by January. Now, we are now in February. Guess the number. 
This is the latest number that we have according to the government data, 566,000. February, it's not even January. You, people are wondering why. I mean, the incompetence, we've been talking about the European Union not being good with this operation. The SNP are even worse. We discovered this, thanks to the Times, that half of Scotland's vaccine allocation is still in the storage. They haven't even been used. So we, first we had the European Union, now we've got the SNP not being able to use these jabs. Um, so the, the Times reports that nearly half of Scotland's uh, vaccines are still sitting in cold storage as delivery continues to lag behind nearly every other region in, of the UK. I mean, it's embarrassing. We do have the latest uh, data uh, thanks to the Public Health England, the UK government. And you can see in this list uh, that Scotland is at the bottom. And uh, yes, 12.7% in terms of uh, people of the age of uh, 16 plus who've received their first dose. That's just embarrassing. I mean, this, these are the people who are very much proud of their um, jab operation and everything else, and they, they, they're not even able to actually do anything. This is exactly why this government, the Scottish government, needs to calm down. It's just not healthy at this point. But they are focused on other things. The Scotsman reports that Nicola Sturgeon and her minions uh, in the Scottish, uh, in Scottish Parliament want to go after Donald Trump. <laughs> Why not? That should be a priority. Let's go after the form, former President of the United States. The Scottish Parliament have been told to hold a vote on the unexplained wealth order into Donald Trump's finances in Scotland. As you know, Donald Trump has uh, resorts and golf courses and you know, other land in uh, uh, Scotland. And uh, the, the SNP, at this point, are very much concerned about Donald Trump's wealth. So they want to have a vote to then have uh, an investigation into Donald Trump's wealth because, you know, we don't have a, any other problem. Education is fine. Health is fine. Uh, Scotland's finances are fine. The problem is Donald Trump. <laughs> Genuinely, this is absolutely astonishing. Uh, so there's a lot of questions we receive. It's Monday, so uh, as you know, uh, we receive uh, questions for the members of the channel. Let's go to uh, James McCleary, who said, uh, when will we find out if Nicola Sturgeon is getting removed as Scotland's first minister for misleading parliament? Uh, so James, as I mentioned, basically in the next couple of weeks, uh, I think by Valentine's Day, we should have uh, Alex Salmon's uh, testimony, but also the first minister will come to also answer questions if what he says like Alex Salmon is proven to be right, then yes, she'll be forced to resign. Uh, Peter Davis says, Hi Maya, still on the subject of Nicola Sturgeon. Is it possible that her leaking uh, the sensitive information uh, after being instructed by the UK government not to do so is at least a, a potential breach of the Official Secrets Act? So dear, Peter is referring to the video we did a couple of days ago about uh, Nicola Sturgeon releasing documents that... Um, published uh, the UK's uh, latest uh, stock in terms of the vaccines that we have. Uh, Boris Johnson's government didn't want that to be revealed. And uh, since then, Sturgeon has uh, uh, been warning London and Westminster saying, no, I'm going to release more information. Um, depends if the UK government at the time had classified them as uh, uh, sensitive information. So if, if they are classified now, then of course. But uh, since then, she hasn't actually released it again. So if, if they've classified it now and then she releases it, then yes, absolutely, she'll be in a lot of trouble. AD says, do you think the EU's mask slipping uh, will have given us long-term strength against them? And do you think that some of the countries uh, tilted as possibly wanting to leave will um, have looked at this and moved closer to the referendum? Yeah, so this is a good point because um, over the last week, what's been happening in the European Union has shown that Brexit as a concept is a good idea, not just for Britain, but for every single member state in Europe. Uh, we want Brexit for all the European countries. Brexit was never supposed to be just about Britain or England. It was supposed to be a concept for every single European um, country. We, you know, we are pro-Europe, but against the European Union uh, because you know, we have to respect democracy and sovereignty. So I think it will, firstly, yes, strengthen our position against Euro federalism. Secondly, I, I couldn't see a point at this point. If Euro, Eurozone collapses, which it will at some point, and if this crisis continues with the European Commission's leadership, then we could be seeing certain countries slowly moving towards uh, having referendums, but it won't happen until they change their government. So for example, France, Macron has to go. Le Pen, for example, has to win 
in other countries, Italy as well, uh, governments need to change for them to then have the referendum, just like what happened here. The Labour Party had to go, Gordon Brown, the Tories had to come, they've been forced by Nigel Farage to have a referendum. Jamie says, do you think that after the way the European Union has handled the vaccinations and the problems that they had with AstraZeneca, the EU countries will begin to question if they really need the EU and even consider leaving? Uh, yes, Jamie, as I mentioned just now, um, and firstly, Jamie is one of our new members. Welcome as a new member, Jamie. Um, as I said, yes, there is it's highly possible. Uh, and we just have to wait and see which side. And I think it will be, it has to be one of the top countries before we we're gonna have any more smaller countries in, in the Eastern blocs because they, they still receive a lot of money from the European Commission. They bribe them to stay as members. So top countries like France, if they have Euroscepticism on the rise and Le Pen wins, then definitely. Nicholas Pearson says, Hi Maya, do you think that the UK government would have grounds for legal action against Nicholas Sturgeon for leaking uh, the information and operation? Uh, and uh, also, how great is it that the European Union have managed to bring Ramona's on side with Brexiteers and unite us? A lot of Ramona's are finally seeing the benefits of Brexit. Yes, Nicholas, well, you're right, absolutely. I've seen I've had a lot of Ramona friends who are now Brexiteers because of this. Um, again, it goes back to what we said in terms of uh, the document being classified or not being classified. It really depends on that. I actually don't know at this point. Uh, I think we will find out soon, especially if Nicola Sturgeon decides to do it. The first time, apparently, that she released the document, uh, it wasn't against law, apparently. So that's all we know. But she has now warned Westminster that she might do it again. If she does, then I think there will be consequences. Kevin Hoskins says, Hi, Maya. If true, why did the government extend the uh, the Coronavirus Act uh, for local authorities to control local lockdowns? Uh, yes, without getting scrutiny from the opposition uh, and, and also Parliament in general. P.S. Joined yesterday uh, as a member, welcome Kevin, and have purchased one of your hoodies, which in turn has annoyed a friend of mine who is a hardcore Remain. <laughs> well done, Kevin. Firstly, again, thanks for joining as a member. Uh, welcome to the team. Uh, secondly, good shout. Yep. <laughs> Make sure to always get your Brexit hoodies and I believe in Britain hoodies. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the government decided to add this regulation. I mentioned this yesterday on the channel uh, to extend the local council's powers to uh, impose tier one, tier two, tier three local lockdowns. And uh, they are using the line as an excuse, the government, that this is all part of the main act that's already been voted on by parliament. The problem is, that's a loophole. It shouldn't be like that. You know, the, the, the local powers should, should be completely separate because you're giving the power to local councils. Local, the central government have received consent from parliament to introduce draconian measures. Local councils haven't been um, given permission. There has to be actual reform when it comes to our system in parliament uh, for people to actually understand what they're voting on, MPs. Um, so local councils are now going to have more powers, well, the, the power has been extended from March uh, to do this, and I, I don't think it's the right thing to do. Uh, let's go to the next uh, question. Right, Margaret Davis says, with Matt Hancock giving out health information on people to the police, will this uh, not contravene the Data Protection Act as surely our health uh, matters are between doctors and us? So it should be private. Uh, right, so yes, uh, we talked about this yesterday, uh, Matt Hancock's department decided to share people's information through tests and trace with the police. Definitely an issue with data protection, absolutely. The problem we have is that I think the government's loophole again is going to be, well, when you gave consent to give your information through tests and trace, you gave it to the government, to the, the state as a whole. And the police is part of the state. I think that's the loophole. Uh, it should have been like that. We gave, you know, we gave it, well, people who gave it, uh, it was to towards the, the NHS and the, the Department of Health. And now that information is now being shared with the police. And that's, that just shouldn't be the case, really. And I think this thing could actually escalate at this point. But the mainstream media haven't really reported on it, which is quite fascinating. Um, a. Uh, Baisley says, why is the BBC still peddling the O-level propaganda about coronated chicken from the US? I actually have no idea they were still doing that. If they are, then I don't know how to react. This has been debunked years ago. Uh, this is uh, what the Remainers started, in case you don't know, about the potential US-UK trade deal, saying that uh, 
chicken in America is chlorinated and oh this is so bad if you eat that you know you, you'll probably die or you'll, you'll grow mushroom on your head or I don't know you, be, <laughs> you become a cowboy <laughs> um, it's been debunked I can promise you if you eat American chicken you will not grow mushroom on your head uh, and uh, I, I don't know if the BBC is still doing that if they are then it's absolutely embarrassing because it's got nothing to do with it I'm, I'm fine with having American chicken being imported you just label it in the supermarket you could see this is an american chicken this is a british chicken it's called free choice free market live with it next <laughs> alan says hi my aunt lacy considering the china and uh, the china issue between new zealand and australia do you think that this will affect the kanzak situation yes kanzak is the the potential partnership between canada new zealand australia and the uk it's a trade partnership but it's more than that cooperation on every level it could affect it. In case you don't know, New Zealand have been taking the China side, the CCP side, and Australia are very much against the CCP, uh, and they're clashing right now. The UK are trying to sign in a, a trade agreement with both countries, New Zealand and Australia, and uh, Liz Trust wants to create this Kanzak agreement. It could it could affect it, um, depending on how the UK government and Australia react to New Zealand. They could technically ignore it. They could ignore New Zealand's relationship with China and uh, just say, oh, it's fine. We're just going to ignore it. That's just the Kanzuk. They shouldn't ignore it. They should address it. But knowing our politicians and the governments, don't be surprised if they completely ignore it. The, the Australian government are good. They're very robust against the CCP, but uh, the UK uh, government sometimes would make mistakes, let's just say. Uh, so that's uh, all the time that I have for, to answer all the questions, some of the questions that we receive. We always receive a lot of questions. So if you want to become a member, and uh, use the, the benefits that we have weekly q and a's uh, video calls on wednesdays on zoom with the members and everything else that we have discounted merchandise i believe in britain merchandise check out the link in the description uh, or just find the join button next to subscribe hopefully you should be able to find that or it's on the main page of the channel as well uh, so don't forget subscribe to the channel click on the notification bell next to it and click on all not personalized otherwise you won't be notified when i release a new video uh, thanks again for watching i'm my tc and i'll see you guys in the next video.